，有的是这么想。Welcome to Kuwait and thanks for accepting uh, Tamkin's invitation. Thank you for having us. I still uh, remember the first day when uh, Five Guys uh, opened in Kuwait. It was something similar to the videos you've shown in uh, Covent Garden and in, uh, and in Dubai. Uh, but I was surprised that 13 years from 1986 till 2002 and then you started to operate and to expand. This process is very, very slow. I, I, I know you will say that we are focusing on the brand, we want uh, uh, to be sure that uh, our expansion will be uh, very well, but still, 16 years in this industry, don't you think you guys were very slow? Not for us. If, if we would have gone any faster, I think we would have never made it. Mm -hmm. um, you have to remember, in our case, it was five young boys that started the business. And so I think if they would have tried to franchise in, um, you know, 92 or 95, let's just say, with two or three restaurants, I don't think they would have had the confidence to say no to the chicken sandwich or no to the salad or no to uh, onion rings. And so um, those years allowed them to grow with the brand, get comfortable with the brand, have confidence in what their brand is. And, um, and, and I think that confidence is what, is what fueled a lot of our success. When you franchise, you're hiring a bunch of, um, not hiring, you're partnering with a bunch of um, very smart, very successful, generally entrepreneurs that um, will come at you with a lot of ideas. And some of them are very good, but some of them can also distract the brand and you need to have the confidence to um, say no. Okay, so, so within those 16 years, you've tried a number of, of items. You've, you've tested the chicken sandwich, for example, and the salads and whatever. Did, did they go through this whole process? Yeah, so they didn't, not, not specifically chicken sandwich or salads, but they tried a ham sandwich. Um, they tried a number of other little things. Mm -hmm. And they always came back to, um, if we just focus on a great burger and a great fry, we can execute that every single day and that's what's going to make us. Um, okay, from, from 2002 till 2013, uh, what is the difference between expanding inside the United States and expanding overseas? If you have the same brand, it's the, the same burger that is served in Kuwait, London, or New York, so why did it took that long to go internationally? Well, in, in many ways, there's nothing different about international except that it's a lot farther away and the cultures are different. And so, again, it comes back to confidence. Um, we had more confidence telling um, our franchisee partners in California that they didn't need a California role to, to make us successful. I don't know that we had that confidence for the Middle East or for Europe where they might say, you have to have this or you'll never make it. Um, and so, again, I think we needed to build our confidence with our partners over time. Um, and, um, and, and, and build a business that was profitable and had cash flow to support international growth. International growth is expensive. Mm -hmm. If I applied to, to Five Guys to open uh, Five Guys in my country, anywhere in the world, what is the criteria that I should follow in order for you guys to give me the approval? Yeah, it, ours is not um, textbook. As you can see, nothing about us is really textbook, but mm -hmm. um, first of all, you've got to have some business background that shows you, you have business acumen, you understand how to grow a business, how to manage a business. That, that's sort of a foregone conclusion. But after that, um, we look for two things, and um, one is, do you have passion for our brand? Um, and we can, we can find that out through spending time together, whether or not you're just looking to make some money uh, and flip this thing in a few years, or do you have passion for the brand and the long-term health of the brand? Um, and if we start to feel that that's there, then that checks that box. The second box that we have to check is, uh, do we like hanging out with you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Al Sayer family, who I think uh, Hamad's going to speak here soon, um, 
when we came and spent time with them, we came to Kuwait in, I think, 2013. And we walked the streets, and we had dinners and lunches, and, um, and that connection happened where um, they obviously had the business acumen. They're successful businessmen and women, uh, and a su- successful business family like ours, because mm-hmm. we're a family business, still private. They showed incredible passion for five guys. And we really liked hanging out, hanging out with them. Yeah. They know the Kuwaitis very well. They know they would eat five guys, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And so those three things, um, if any of those things aren't there, you could have the first two, and a lot of people would sign them up for a big fat check. But if, if we don't have number three, we're not interested. Mm-hmm. It's hard to travel. It's hard to spend time away from your family. And so when you're making that sacrifice, you want to be with people that you like and you respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I, I think you've been, uh, the, fir- the, first, the first branch in the Middle East was in Dubai Mall, right? That's right. That was two to three years uh, ago, maybe? Three years ago, yeah. H- how, how do you evaluate uh, uh, five guys in, in our region, the GCC, the Middle East, and if you compare it with, with the whole world? H- how do you see our region? The GCC is leading the world. Mm-hmm. Um, we eat too much, huh? You eat, <laughs> you like burgers and fries. <laughs> <laughs> no, the partnership here, uh, our partners, we have three partners in the GCC. All three have been awesome stewards of the brand. They've been great partners to us. They've been good friends to us. Um, and and the, the consumer has been good to us. And that unwritten contract has happened here. Um, you know, again, we opened in Kuwait, and there was a line. Yes. That's the brand, and it's the contract that we made with all those consumers over the years, and it came back to pay dividends right here in Kuwait City. Mm-hmm. Are you planning to expand more, more in Kuwait? We are. I'm going to look at sites tomorrow. Ah, great. Um, uh, for for te- technology, um, there's, you know, there's new uh, applications every now and then in, in the whole world, like Uber Eats, for example. In Kuwait, we have, we have uh, Carriage. Uh, even, even with technology, f- five guys always comes last when uh, adapting with those, with those uh, applications. Yeah. What, why is that? Uh, I'm glad you noticed because it's intentional. One is we're very stubborn. That's why we've only added one menu item in 31 years. Um, p- we feel like part of the value of... Of the, of the experience, or the value of the ticket price is the experience in the store. Mm-hmm. You get to have the free peanuts, you get to listen to the rock and roll music, you get to smell it, you get to see the crew working hard on your custom made burger. And so we've always been reticent to offer too many um, avenues for people to get our burger and fry and not get that part of the value equation. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're, we also can't do is have our heads in the sand and realize that um, consumers are changing, how they interact with brands, how they uh, um, um, are living their lives. And so uh, in the U.S., for instance, about 20% of our sales are what we call um, outside the four walls. So they're coming in through mobile, online, and delivery. Mm. Um, And that's just the way the consumer wants to interact sometimes. They may come into Five Guys on a Saturday after a game, uh, but on Tuesday night, when they're home in front of the TV, they want to pick up their phone and have it delivered to their front door, and that's fine too. Mm-hmm. Talking about the brand, is there a difference between an offline brand and online brand? Do you, do, do you compare or do you have different strategies when the online appearance of, of Five Guys and those applications, if you are going to participate in them, and the offline appearance of, of Five Guys? How do you, how do you differ? So explain, I'm, I want to make sure I'm answering that right, the, the difference between online and offline? As a brand, your appearance, your appearance in those applications, you, there's oh, definitely yeah, yeah. guidelines, uh, different criteria yeah. that you should follow. Yeah, so I think, I think the visual online or offline is the same. I think we're pretty consistent there. Um, it's, the, it's the other elements that, um, um, of your senses that you don't get. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're when you're off when when you're I guess when you're ordering online if I'm following the logic there, so you can go in and you'll feel our brand you'll see it and it'll look strong and it'll look like what you've seen your whole life with our brand, but you don't smell anything, 
Um, you can't hear the sizzle of the, of the burgers on the grill. You can't hear the rock and roll music. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we think that those other senses create value in the experience. And we, we hate giving that up. But we understand that some consumers... But you, sh- you should be there. That's right. Um, you, said, you said that when you open a new store, I've seen that in Kuwait. Uh, you said in, in London and in... Uh, in Dubai, you, you don't spend any marketing uh, campaigns That's right. asking the people to come and, uh, and visit. Is, is that only for the first days of, the, of opening the store, or it's in the whole Five Guys history? We, you don't spend marketing. We, so um, I'll try to make this quick and simple, but it's, it's more, it, we don't spend any money on paid advertising, zero. We're $2 billion multinational brand and we pay no money for paid advertising. We collect one and a half percent for marketing. And again, I'll try to simplify this. We secret shop our stores twice a week, a day shift and a night shift. Mm -hmm. The day shifts get stacked ranked, the night shifts get stacked ranked. The top third of both of those shifts get the one and a half percent back. So if you were working a shift on a lunch and you won the secret shop for that week, meaning the burger was great, the fries were great, the bathrooms were clean, there were no smudges on the window, the crew was smiling, um, on and on. Uh, they will win, th- uh, the crew will win three or four hundred dollars that they get to split amongst themselves. In uh, 2017, we will spend, uh, send 26 million dollars back to our crew members, mm-hmm. rewarding them for doing well at how they treated a customer, which goes back to that unwritten contract. If you treat the customer right, give them a great burger, a great fry, a good experience, they're gonna go tell their friends. Mm-hmm. So we spend money on marketing, but it's not paid advertising. It's very, very different. Mm-hmm. In, in, in the F&B industry, there is uh, a number of trends that comes and go uh, every now and then. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed that in the past, in the past decade, the healthy, fast food concepts are, 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 coming, are coming up. Uh, how could you manage to, to position uh, five, guy, five Guys as a brand to match the international trend that we are healthy, we are clean, we are not like the junk foods, the bad examples that we see, we see yeah. on the media. Five Guys is different. How, how do you do that? So first, I think you always have to differentiate between a fad and a trend. Never follow the fad, it's short-lived. Trends you need to watch, and if you feel like they have some legs, you need to pay attention to them. In our case, delivery we're starting to embrace because it's a trend that we think is is just part of the culture now. Mm -hmm. When it comes to um, health, um, um, we have have obviously not followed that trend. We added a new menu item, it was a milkshake with 800 Mm -hmm. calories or something. So, Mm -hmm. um, but here's what we do. We don't advertise, as we just talked about. We don't discount our food. We don't give away product. We don't try to convince people that you should be eating our food three, four, or five times a week. Um, We're not trying to convince people that a burger, a fry, and a milkshake are healthy. Mm -hmm. It's fresh, made to order, but we don't try to use words that trick the consumer into thinking, maybe this is healthier than I thought it was. It's a burger, it's a fry, and it's a milkshake, and it's a Coke. You should uh, come in as often as your lifestyle allows it. Mm-hmm. If you exercise a lot, you work out a lot, maybe you can come in a couple times a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a lot of our consumers, and they tell us, Five Guys is a treat. Mm-hmm. They come in every four to six weeks because it's a treat. It's where they mm-hmm. indulge on something that they love, it tastes great, but they know they can't eat it all the time. Mm-hmm. How many times do you eat Five Guys a week? Too many. Too many? Yeah. So if you, you play, you go I, to the gym I, a lot. I, in, uh, in order to maintain. Uh, Hamad has me running around this town like crazy. <laughs> I'm, I probably burned 4,000 calories today. Uh, interesting. So. Um, uh, the, the, package, the packaging in, in, uh, inside the, the store, you know, uh, you, you guys are very basic when it comes to wrapping, wrapping the sandwich, uh, the bag that I get after, after I pay for, for, for my food. It, it, is this part of, of the classic standard uh, branding position for, for, for Five Guys? It's, it's very, very basic. Why, why is that? 
Yeah, I wish, um, I wish Jerry Morell could be here to talk to you about that kind of stuff. Um, I, can t I can share it with you, but he's just so awesome to listen to. Um, everything about Five Guys is done for a reason, and, and Jerry felt like he wanted to reinforce at every point that we were putting all of our money into our food, into the produce that we bought, into the potatoes we bought, the beef that we bought, the bread that we bought, and um, so we didn't have a fancy bag. We just had a cheap brown bag, mm -hmm. and we wrap it in tin foil because it keeps the burger nice and warm, um, and we put the extra scoop on because we want to um, um, under-promise and over-deliver, and so um, all that packaging and, and sort of the the real stripped downness of our stores was to reinforce that um, if you spend a dollar with us and we're going to keep a little bit of profit, we have to spend that other somewhere. And we put, as, we put some of our marketing dollars mm. into the food. So in other words, we could put a point of our, of our margin into advertising or we could put it into better produce, better beef, better buns, and that's what we do. Okay, but... but Packaging is still, still important. You yeah. know, talk, you, 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 you're talking about how, how the brand should be, should be very strong. So it's not all about visual, right? It's yeah. about the concept itself and, and the, quality, the quality of the product. Yeah. Perfect. Um, uh, I've already started to get some, some questions from the, from the audience. Sure. I'm sure that uh, we have more, more questions uh, uh, coming now. So um, the question that is that I have right now is that uh, as a recommendation uh, for uh, any person who want to start uh, an FMB concept, is it better to hunt for a good international brand and take it as a franchise, or to start his own brand from scratch? If I have those two opportunities, what, 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 do, you, what do you advise? Well, I'd be, uh, um, I'd, I'd be a hypocrite if I said don't franchise since we sell franchises. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think, I think it depends on your personal situation. I think um, franchising is a color by numbers model. If you have some basic business acumen and there's a strong brand, and they can teach you how to manage and execute that brand, that can be a perfect fit for a, an entrepreneur, a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. um, the longer road is probably going to be to develop your own. But if you love being in a kitchen, you love cooking food, if you have a recipe that your mom gave you that you think is the best X, Y, Z in the business, well, if that's your passion, that might be the path you take. So I mm -hmm. think it's a personal decision as much as anything. Bo both work. Mm -hmm. Um, another question from the audience is that, in, in, in two words, what is, what is the secret after this huge success of, of Five Guys? Uh, quality and discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, the future of, of Five Guys, how, how do you see Five Guys 10 years or 15 years from now? You know, we've been asked that question since I started here, and um, I always answered it this way. I mean, there's the, there's the blocking and tackling. We have to pick more great partners like the Al Sayer family. Uh, we have to have a second to none um, s supply chain, so we're serving high quality food in a safe manner. Um, but I always answer, so, so those are sort of the, the MBA business school answers, and they're right. But I would answer it this way. Our success depends on the success of our next 100 stores. Because the next 100 stores are what fuel our growth. If they open bigger and better and more profitable than our current stores, then the future is very bright. If we start to stumble with bad site selection, maybe we take our eye off the ball on quality or execution of the, of the operations, you know, things could slow down. Mm -hmm. So to me, the most important thing is who are our partners, what kind of sites are we selecting and are we executing the brand in the next hundred stores? And that will determine our success in years three to five from now. Mm -hmm. And the new regions are, uh, you said, Australia in your, in your presentation? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of growth still to go in Europe. We still have a mm -hmm. lot of growth here in the Middle East. Um, and then our next uh, regional expansion will be into Asia and, and Australia. Great.
Thank you very much, uh, thank you. Sam. It's a pleasure uh, having you, and thank you for accepting yeah. our invitation. I'm glad to be here. Thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.